to spend some time talking a little bit about the holidays uh, when you're a single parent because things uh, can get a little bit complicated and you sort of have to figure out a strategy that works for your family and for the kids but also for yourself. So yeah. all three of you have been single uh, parents at some point in your life. Um, Marilyn, what, what did you do? How did you handle it? Did you have a strategy? Um, yeah, I did. And, you know, being that type A that I am, I, I just thought that I needed to make sure that uh, I told Alan what I wanted. Right. And that was I, because I, I'm from Vancouver, I wanted to take Andrew and we would go for one Christmas in Vancouver and have the whole thing there. So the Christmas Eve, the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. So then he would have that with my family and then the next year that he would stay with his dad and do the whole Christmas with his dad. Got it. And so, but the neat thing that happened was that when Andrew was with me for Christmas, uh, then uh, in Vancouver, his dad would have a Christmas too. So Andrew got two Christmases every year forever. And right. so, and then when we would do it, when we we would stay uh, when I when Andrew would go with his dad with me. Yeah. My mom and dad would fly out, and oh. then we would do. Some, I'm going to cry. Oh. When we did Smith Christmas here, and it was oh, it was that's amazing. So, nice. yeah, so it everybody was. sort of worked together to make that happen. Yeah, we did. And obviously, his Christmases were on different days depending on which parent he was with. Uh, like, would you do it the week before, the day before? It, de it depended when my parents were in town. Sometimes yeah. we would do it like the beginning of December, but we that's always put awesome. the tree up, the, you know, December first, and then so Christmas would be whenever. Yeah. And then he would always work it out with his dad too. And so and and even when we would go to Vancouver, we would put a, tr a note on the tree to say to Santa that we were in Vancouver that year, and yes. so that, you know, Santa to make sure that he would yes. bring the presents to Vancouver. For and sure. So, yeah. I mean, Santa now has the technology to know. He knows. <laughs> but it was they, a very a smart text. thing to yeah. leave a note yeah. at the time. It was Andrew's idea. Yeah, very yeah. smart. Was was on top How is he going to find me? It's like, well, put a note on the tree. Yeah, put a note on there. <laughs> Sarah, what, do you, yeah. what are you planning on doing this year? Well, this is our first year experiencing this, and, uh, you know, we really work together to figure out a for now solution. I think that's one of my tips that I'm learning is it, it's going to evolve as time yeah. goes on, right? But for this year, it's at our house mm -hmm. and Daddy's coming over Christmas Eve because we always do an interview with the kids under the tree and I ask them the same questions every year since they were too tall to even, I think one year, the whole Cooper said was ho, ho, ho <laughs> for every answer. But um, So he'll come over for that until bedtime and then as soon as we wake up in the morning, we'll call Daddy, he lives five minutes away and he will yeah. come over for the present opening and stay there as long as he wants. I just think that's what the kids wanted this year and that's yes. what we all want this year. And again, it may change as years go on. Right. I, they're hearing about your two Christmases so they may want to chat with me after the show. <laughs> I don't know. How do we um, work out two Christmases. Yeah, but I think, you know, for now, and, and I don't have family here, so for me that's really great knowing that we're going to spend that together. Yes. And then with other holidays that are maybe less significant or less require less preparation, right. for example, then I always make sure that they're going with his family to do something special with all of them. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then what will you do during those times? Do you know? Do you have a plan for yourself? Yes, I have such great friends here. All of my family's in Nova Scotia, but I just get invited and yeah, I get a lot of invitations. It's been really, Good. really good. That yeah. is good. Yeah. Okay, you got your second family. I do. Right? Yeah. How about you, Janice? How did you sort of, how, how do you work through it during the holidays? So we trade off the holidays, mm -hmm. the Christmas morning. So whoever gets the kids in the evening on Christmas Eve, then they go stay, spend the night, and then they'll come to the other parents at noon. And then we just trade off every year. Okay. And so my, we've always in the past even married, had my family on the 24th. We're still able to do that and then make that transition happen. Right. With the kids, so everybody kind of leaves if it's my family they'll leave the same time the kids leave to go to their dads and then it's not so you know they're leaving a party right? oh, we just kind of make okay. it all work together got it and then people are there when the kids come home if it happens to be at noon on Christmas Day yes and what I have found though is that if they're the ones who are coming in the afternoon that's our time they're less enthused they've kind of done the whole opening and big breakfast and so they're it's more of a quicker um, morning or opening of the presents it just right. goes faster and they don't want to indulge that much they kind of just want to be back Back home and quick little things. Yes. The stockings are huge hits, and then, and then we carry on. Okay, yeah. so you have to sort of manage your expectations because yes. if you're expecting second cr Christmas to be as crazy hype as first Christmas, it might not happen, and that's probably something you had to learn totally absolutely. over 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 the years just to scale it back a little bit. Yeah, and just to make, just to know what they're expecting. Like the yeah. transitions are hard, and so you're dealing with the transition on top of the holiday, and so you just absolutely you're just there to to love them, to be there, whatever, however they come. Yes. Yes. 
Now, I know that we were talking a little bit about what, what to do then if it's not your turn with your child and they're someone, somewhere else on a significant uh, date. And you said you've done a, you were a mess for a few years. I was, yeah. Um, yeah. But then you figured out, okay, I, I got to do something here, whether yeah. it's hang out with my girlfriend or throw a party. Yeah. Right? Because it totally, because, you know, it's a big deal Christmas from mm -hmm. my, and also Same. from his dad's side of the family. So neither one of us, you know, so it's hard for, it was hard for his dad too. It was right. hard for me. Right. And so, yeah, I would try to do other things. And yeah. so, uh, because I felt like, you know what, I don't, I don't deserve to be sad that day. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I deserve to be happy too. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so giving myself permission not to be sad because I wasn't with my child. Yeah. Oh, I got goosebumps. All the hair on my body, including my unshaved legs, are hand <laughs> standing <laughs> at attention. <laughs> oh my God. But I just didn't want, yeah. So yeah, I gave my, my, myself permission to have fun. Yes, which you, which you, you know, achieved so um, graciously, and I'm so happy you came through, and, and things are awesome now. Yeah, no, it, just you know so what? good. Hang in there; it gets better. Yeah, well, it really it's good does. to lean yeah. on other parents yeah. that are mm -hmm. doing that have ideas and strategies for how they're going to work it out. So thanks so much for being so candid, guys.